Yeah, Friday! Welcome to the Ranting Ring Watcher Podcast. The future number one weight loss podcast in the world. I am your host, Donato Russo. I hope you enjoy the show today. If this is your first time here and you enjoy the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. If the podcast app you're listening on allows you to rate the show, please leave a four-star or five-star rating. Any rating is greatly appreciated. This is episode 73. I am glad to have you with me today. Now... Let's not hold anything back. Let's get into this. Journey updates. Okay, guys, I am down 8.6 pounds this week. For the month of January, I am down 1.8 pounds this week. And total, since January 2019, I am down 139.2. Pounds remaining to get to milestone 150 is 10.8 pounds. The pounds remaining to get to milestone 175, 35.8 pounds. And the pounds remaining to get to milestone 200, 60.8 pounds. This, This loss this week is an enormous loss. Enormous loss. And if it's not, it, it sh- what it should do for you is stand as proof that not every loss is a true loss, not every gain is a true gain. Now, here, let me take you back just to give you some background. Weigh in for me fell on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. So for the last couple of weeks... On Christmas Day, when I weighed in, I had gained 1.6 pounds. And on New Year's Day, when I weighed in, it was a gain of 6.8 pounds. This was a total of an 8.4 pound gain within, I guess you would call it two-week time period. Did I believe in any fiber of my being that I gained 8.4 pounds of fat in two weeks and 14 days? No, I did not. Food was being served that was very rich, that was made completely differently than normal, and that ingredients that never would even be thought of were being used for these foods for the holiday season. I am very sensitive to salt, And so I could easily gain between 6 and 10 pounds in a week if I decide to eat heavy, salty foods. Because I retain water when I eat salt. And just as quickly as I can gain it, I can correct the problem by making a few steps, making sure I drink plenty of water and dropping as much salt as possible. And the body, it's like, just releases everything. So is it, is it more likely that the 8.6 pounds from this week was water weight? Of course, absolutely. 100%. You know how they say the scale doesn't define me? It has to work both ways. It cannot only work when you have a gain. Follow what I'm telling you now. Hear what I'm saying. You cannot throw the words out, the scale doesn't define me, only when you have gains. Because everybody will know it's BS because you never say it when it's it's a loss. And I'm telling you today, I don't believe this loss was 8.6 pounds of fat. Just the same as I don't believe 
I lost, I gained 8.4 pounds of fat in the two weekends prior to it. So if we believe, if we try to tell the world we believe one way, then we have to believe the opposite is true of the same scenario. If the scale doesn't define you when you have a gain, the scale can't define you when you have a loss either. It's so important to remain centered when the weight fluctuates like this because the weight will fluctuate and it will fluctuate up and it will fluctuate down. But your emotions in regards to that must always be centered. They must always be unmoved, unwavered, completely centered. So where are you at right now? In your journey, where are you at? Are you new or returning? Are you at goal and maintaining? Are you stagnant and complaining? Or are you on fire and succeeding? So many of us are stagnant and complaining. But why? We'll get into that after the break. Don't go anywhere. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening to The Ranting Weight Watcher. If you would like to connect on social media, we would love to connect with you. On Facebook and Instagram, search for at The Ranting Weight Watcher. On Twitter, search for at The Ranting WW. On the Weight Watchers Connect app, search for at Ranting Weight Watcher. You can also email the show, say hello or share your story with us. Send your emails to The Ranting Weight Watcher at gmail.com. You can also call the show and leave a voicemail message that could be played on the air. Just call 505 652 7268. Again, that's 505 652 7268. We look forward to hearing from you. If this is your first time here and you enjoyed the show, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. We are proud to announce that the Ranting Weight Watcher is now rated number four in Feedspot.com's top 10 Weight Watchers podcasts. Click the link in the show's description if you wish to see the full list. If the podcast app you are listening with allows you to rate the show, please leave a 4-star or 5-star rating, whatever is in your heart to leave. Any rating is greatly appreciated. And now, without further delay, here is the star of the show, Donato Russo. We are back. Thanks for sticking with me. So stagnation, what people don't realize really about it is... Stagnation doesn't just happen. Stagnation should be looked at as the result. Actions that we've already done, taken toward our journey. Toward really anything. This theory can be applied to anything you do. If there is stagnation in your life in any way, shape, or form, it can easily be seen as the result of other actions. In the typical scenario, you've heard Weight Watchers and other plans refer to this as being in a rut. Nine times out of 10, you'll hear somebody somewhere say, oh, you know what, you got to change it up. Eat, Eat different foods, do something different. But in reality, I would say, There is still a change needed, but I'm saying make sure everything else is being done at 97% accuracy before you move on to changing what you eat or changing what you do for exercise. Now, what are we talking about, Don? I'll tell you. We really need to pay attention to making sure we are doing the core of whatever the plan is properly. There are core values to Weight Watchers, Keto, all the different weight loss plans in the world. Core values. 
if we are like one of those people who just come into it and say, I don't feel like tracking, and you do everything except tracking. Now, tracking is one of the core values of Weight Watchers. I use it because it's one of the most common things I hear from people when they're complaining that the system doesn't work for them and then you start going into what they're not doing because that's what I do. If you tell me that Weight Watchers isn't working for you, I don't take your word for it. That's not what I do. So if you don't want to be questioned, you probably shouldn't come to me about that because I will question you and I don't it's not because I need the answers it's because I need you to know the answers and I'll make sure I ask the hard questions so that you can realize what you're not doing maybe if you are doing them how inaccurate you are when you're doing them once we can eliminate those things and know that you're doing those things perfectly, then we could talk about, oh, changing it up with your food menu or changing it up in the exercise world because the body becomes used to it. Listen, there's not a single person out there who, whose problem is changing up foods or changing up exercise if they aren't tracking, weighing and measuring if they're skipping core values of the system that they're in, there's not a single one of them that, they, that should look as far as doing all that of that other stuff. Because if you're not following the core values, the principles that the plan was based upon, whatever that plan is, it's not even worth having the conversation. We are so busy in this world doing everything except what is actually required of us. You will literally do everything else that anybody has an idea for you to do except track. You know you don't track, but you will literally take the words of 10 other people and there'll be 10 other things and you will waste your time doing those 10 other things as long as one of those 10 things is not doing the tracking you should be doing. I keep saying tracking because it's what I've chosen to be the example. Because so many people out there pretend they don't have the time when really they just don't feel like it. Because everybody in this world has time. We're just using that time to do stuff we would rather be doing while making sure that the most important things, the, po the things that would make you look like a bad person if you didn't do, get done. The idea has to be, look within. We switch plans. We say, oh, okay, Weight Watchers is not working for me. I'm going to try keto. Keto is not working for me. I'm going to go to do intermittent fasting. Oh, intermittent fasting is not working for me. I'm going to do... Slim Fast, Herbal Life, whatever other one, just plug in a name. The thing is, you will find success in every single plan. Every single plan that's out there in the world, you will find some sort of success if you apply certain things. Because you know what? Anything is better than nothing. Okay? But everybody comes to a point where the work gets harder. And if you think... The plan isn't working anymore. It's because you need to work harder. Because everybody gets, it does not matter the plan. Every plan has an invisible line where you need to work harder to get further. It's not going to work. Listen, if this was the idea, if, if that was okay, if your way of thinking was the way it should work, like on day one on Weight Watchers should be the same as the final day on Weight Watchers, the way you work, then essentially you should graduate college after you're done with kindergarten. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly. Think. There are levels in, in education. You get to a certain point, and then you pass from kindergarten to first grade. You get to another point, you pass from first grade to second grade. Everything is pass, pass, get to the next level. 
But we can't think, put that same thinking into anything we attempt to do in life, literally anything. Whether it's a new job, whether it's a financial endeavor or, or a risk of entrepreneurship, or it's a weight loss system. There is going to be levels of success and your job is to figure out when you have to work harder to get to the next level. Because what you did yesterday may not be good enough for tomorrow. Or today even. We watch others do whatever various plans. If you, like say you see someone else on Weight Watchers. And they're doing great. They, they are doing so much better than you are. And they've completely transformed their life. And we could sit there and yell, scream, and shout and demand their results. And yet, we won't even do half the work. We demand the same results someone else has achieved and yet we are unwilling to do even half that work. How can that be? Instead of acknowledging that we're not working hard enough, we call them lucky. Oh, they're lucky that they got that far. No, there's no such thing as luck. There's only work, those willing to do the work, and those unwilling to do it. I've said that before. I'll say it a thousand times before it gets in your head. When will we realize that we have to look inward to really figure out what the real action that needs to be taken? Not ask so-and-so for advice and this one and that one and the other one until we find the one person that tells us the problem is not us. Because that's what we do. We ask one person and God forbid they point the finger at you. They go, you go and find someone else. You go and find someone else. And you keep telling the same sob story over and over and over again until you find the same person who's in the same position as you, who's willing to tell you it's not you. Or you maybe you find someone who's employed and it's the company policy to tell you it's not you. Because it's cor- someone in corporate decided this was the approved answer. So you get a canned response to your situation because it was what was approved at the time by a bunch of suits at the top of the organization. We will take those words or we will find the one person that will give us what we want to hear rather than listen to the hard truth about the real situation. Or we tell ourselves lies. Oh, I've never tracked. I should be able to not track and keep going. You may have found a success without tracking. But here you are, no longer succeeding. You may have found success not measuring and weighing. But here you are now, no longer succeeding. And... How is it that you do those things or you skip doing those things and think you should be able to get away with it and make it to goal without doing those things? Why would they have made stuff like that the core values of the plan if it wasn't necessary? We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Hello, I'm Donato Russo, and I am the Ranting Weight Watcher. I wrote an affirmation. It's called the Ranter's Creed. I dedicate that affirmation to all of you who are watching.
Nothing can stand in your way. Because you are an unstoppable force. Your challenges crumble in your presence because you are so strong. Your insecurities no longer have power over your life because you are so confident. Your mistakes are your choices and you are okay with this because you are so intelligent. The mirror and the scale no longer haunt you because you are so beautiful. You can face any circumstance with unwavering support because you are so loved. The demons of your past can no longer torment you because you love yourself. All things are possible as long as you believe because God is on your side. You will achieve all of your goals, not if, but when, because you have no boundaries. You are the champion of your story because you do whatever it takes to win. No one can take what you've done away from you because you are the author and the hero of your story. Arise, champion. The victory is yours. Because you are enough. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with me. So we're talking about stagnation. And I got into a little bit of how our first inclination whenever things become stagnant is to make changes blindly. Oh, you're eating the same foods. Change up the foods. Oh, you're doing the same exercises. Change up the exercises. We make blind changes. But do we ever take a moment to analyze instead of what we are doing to analyze what we aren't doing? I would hazard a guess that the last thing we ever analyze is what we aren't doing. And we don't do it until someone forces us to see it or do it. You know, we are in the driver's seat. What was it? Two episodes ago, I talked to you about how when a a race car driver is training to become a race car driver, they go through this whole scenario. It's called a, a skid car. And the skid car has something underneath that lifts the car up. Now that that thing, whatever it is that lifts the car up or causes it to slide is remote operated by someone on the sides of the track. And so when you're driving the car around, the guy with the remote, it pushes a button, causes the car to go into a skid when you least expect it. And your job is to get out of the skid without having an accident. And the one thing they tell the drivers in this scenario is don't concentrate on where you're going. Concentrate on where you want to go. Do you understand the difference? If you're headed toward the wall, don't concentrate on the wall because you're going to hit the wall. Instead, concentrate on where you want to go. 
They tell them this so they don't crash. So let me ask you this one question. You know what? Even better, even better. It's me. I'm the one. I'm the one who's stagnant. I'm the one complaining. I'm the one who's about to quit or change plans. You name it. And all you need to do is get me to realize what I need to do. And you know there are things I'm not doing. What do you tell me? Do you tell me to look at the food I'm eating and change it up? Do you tell me that I'm doing the same old exercises day after day? Or do you know that it will save my life and stop me hitting a wall if you just get me to see the things I'm not doing and the things I should be doing to get everything right in my life? What would you do? What would you do in that scenario to stop me from hitting the wall? Think about all of the feelings you just had when I tell you it's me. I'm the one headed toward the wall. I'm the one about to crash. I'm the one about to quit, change plans, make drastic changes in my life for literally no reason. And you have the power to stop it all. Would you do it? Would you use that power and stop me from making a big mistake? Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. Are you worth that same action? Because if all of those things apply to you today and it's me trying to stop you from hitting the wall through this podcast and all I have are my words and your ears. Are you worth the time it will take to convince you to look at what you're not doing, not look at what you are doing. It doesn't matter the system. If you get to the point where things get hard and you fold every time, It doesn't matter. Weight Watchers, Keto, Intermittent Fasting, Herbal Life, Slim Fast, Mediterranean Diet, Circle Diet, all of them. If you get to the point where it gets hard and you don't push forward, none of these plans will work. If you're trying to start a business and you get to the point to where things get hard and you quit, you will never succeed in business. If you are trying to go to school and when things get hard, you quit, you will never graduate. Things will always get hard. If this thing we call a healthy lifestyle was easy, everybody would be doing it. The majority of the population would be perfectly healthy, not obese. And I would argue that 
the death toll from the current stuff happening in this world right now will be far lower because it was just the CDC that recognized the other day that 80% of the deaths that happened because of this virus floating around the world are with people that have four or more other health issues. Now, if they all have four or more other health issues, how many of them would have been erased with a healthy lifestyle? That's my question. That's my question. How many of those deaths that happened in the last two years could have been saved if they could have eliminated some of those health issues with a healthy lifestyle? How many of those relatives would still be here right now if they would have valued their lives more than their poor choices? Every system is going to have work. It's going to have easy work. And then when you run out of easy work, what's left is hard. And the majority of us quit when it gets hard and blame the system, blame whatever other circumstances of our life, just whatever it takes not to blame ourselves. And then the majority of us, that the the actual portion of us that would blame ourselves have surrounded us with a bunch of people that will talk us out of blaming ourselves. Listen, I'm all for not beating yourself up. But if you are the problem, you are the problem. Hello? Do what is easy and your life will be hard. But do what is hard and your life will be easy. It's not rocket science. It's about what you really want. You've told the world that you want a healthy lifestyle. Of course, things were going to get hard for you. Of course, things are not always going to go your way. And now you find yourself in a stagnated position. Things are not moving. Things are not doing anything. And instead of facing the truth for what it is, you've decided to blame everything else and look for every other possibility. When you start a healthy lifestyle things are going to go right and wrong all of the time your job is one thing to find the center at all times because at any given moment things could be too far to the left and then the next moment could be too far to the right your job is to find the center and be centered at all times It's time to face the truth. It is not only necessary, it is the most, the most difficult thing you will have to do in this journey. Face the truth when things aren't going your way and because if it's you are that problem, you are the one that needs to be fixed. And if you never face that truth, it will never get fixed and you will be stuck in this position the rest of your life. Face the truth, find your center, and break stagnation for the first time and for the last time. I love each and every one of you. God bless you all.